The biggest winner in the big game could be you, thanks to BetMGM. The king of sportsbooks is offering new customers a chance to score $158 in bonus bets instantly. That's right, instantly. Just download the BetMGM app and sign up using bonus code VEGAS58. Then, place a $5 money line wager on the big game. You'll receive $158 in bonus bets instantly, regardless of your wager's outcome. Don't miss your opportunity to cross the goal line on the money line as pro football's top teams clash for the championship. Can't be in Vegas for the big game? Then bring the big game excitement to you with the king of sportsbooks. BetMGM and GameSense remind you to play responsibly. See BetMGM.com for terms. 21 plus only. Iowa only. New customer offer. Subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. That's 1-800-BETS-OFF. In 2005, two brothers set off on a road trip that would eventually save the world and change television. For 15 seasons and 327 episodes, Supernatural took audiences on a wild ride of family, fate, and faith with a rocking soundtrack and a seriously cool car. But that was then, and this is now. And while the show might have ended, we're not quite done with the journey. And that's why we're watching it all over again, diving deep into every episode of Supernatural with the fine folks who made it. And we're taking you along for the ride. I'm Rob Benedict. I played Chuck Shirley, a.k.a. God. And yes, that's a bit of a spoiler, but spoilers are going to be fair game here. And I'm Richard Spate Jr., and I played the Trickster, also known as the Archangel Gabriel. We'll be talking about the entire series, so don't say we didn't warn you. So buckle up and settle in. This is Supernatural, then and now. Hey, everybody, I'm Rob Benedict. I'm Richard Spade, Jr. And we are here to walk you through the series Supernatural, episode by episode. We're going to gently take your hand and guide you through every swinging episode the show ever shot and aired, and that's 327 bad boys. Let's start with the first one, the pilot episode. The one that started it all, Bobo. You know, in this episode, we get to sit down with Jensen and Jared. Who are they? They played Sam and Dean Winchester, the leads of the show. What? Yeah. I wish I'd known that before the interview. <laughs> well, we get to cover quite a few things with them, including the audition process, how they came to be Sam and Dean. How they met. I mean, it's not how only just met, the audition yeah. process, but how those individuals met and bonded. Because, you know, the core of the show is their relationship. Right. Exactly. And uh, it really it is. If they hadn't hit it off, this we wouldn't be having this podcast. Robbie and I would be talking about a pilot. It'd be a one episode podcast and we would have never met. Right. So. so it's not even it's not even the Sam and Dean origin, it's the Jensen and Jared origin story. Correct. Um and then we talk about that they had a lot of fun um shooting with uh, people on fire on the ceiling. I was going to say they actually uh you know, in the day of practical effects, meaning they did it in real time mm-hmm. right there on the sound stage, they uh, had to actually shoot in rooms that were on fire, yeah, yeah. things that were would be considered, quote-unquote, illegal to do That's today. Right. That's right. Uh, and run for cover. And then uh, we get into uh, another less-talked-about show called Threshold that ran for 13 episodes on CBS. But <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that to the boys to discuss, and uh, let's just say we, we touch on that with great clarity. But let's stick with Supernatural, the pilot episode. This is the pilot episode of Supernatural. We are introduced to the Winchester brothers, Sam and Dean, whose mother was killed in 1983 by something not natural. Oh, yeah. Mary Winchester's death set her husband John on a hunt to find what killed her. 22 years later, Dean retrieves Sam from college at Stanford after John goes missing. Yep. Now this search takes the boys to Jericho, California, where they hunt the ghost of Constance Welch, a woman in white who killed her children and herself, and now lures unfaithful men to their deaths. With a little brotherly teamwork and a 67 Chevy Impala, Sam and Dean send Constance back home for good. Sam heads back to college, only for his girlfriend Jessica to end up dead, on fire, on his ceiling, just like his mother 22 years before. What a dink! Yeah, right? We end the episode with the boys determined to find their mother and Jessica's killer and their lost father. Oh, they've got some work to do, Bubbo. They sure do. Let's get into it. Okay, here we are. First of all, Jen Snackles, Jared Padalecki, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks, thank Rob. you so much. Yeah. Um, Rich. Rich, thank you, Rich. Thank you, Rob. And so we, we're going to start with the pilot of Supernatural. So I have to admit something. I watched it 
just the other day for the first time. <laughs> and <laughs> I have been doing the conventions for, what, 12, 13 years, but I've never watched the pilot. So it made well, you, so much sense. How many sense. episodes have you actually been in, too? Like 20, 21. Exactly. Yeah. What about you, Spate? Are you winning this battle, or are you losing this battle of most episodes of Supernatural? No, what Rob won. Rob Rob is ha, appeared in more episodes than I did. Then in. I would rather you not talk for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll direct our comments and questions to. Uh, Although that's, dire- already, that's a recurring theme in this whole process. So <laughs> if you add your directing credits, you're on. Although unlike unlike Rob, Rich did his research before coming on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so so he, he did watch the yeah, first episode. Rob still calls I, I, me. I was Jared. getting texts from Rob last night going, "Did you know that Jeffrey Dean Morgan was in Supernatural? <laughs> like he's just discovering." <laughs> You know, <laughs> a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff made sense. I'm like that's why he comes to the convention sometimes. It was, it was listening to Rob live tweet a, the pilot 15 years later. He's like, "Holy <laughs> shit, they're brothers!" <laughs> I watched the show. <laughs> when is it going to air? When does it launch? It changes, <laughs> changes. Oh, premiere. The dynamic. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, no, it was. It was actually great. And you guys have been your friends now for a while. And well, it, we've known each other. Okay, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. We've known each other. We've been acquaintances. You sometimes answer texts. <laughs> but you, to watch the pilot, you're so young. It was so. It was a long time ago. Do you have a memory of what that was like, of, of shooting it? How clear is that in your mind? The pilot, for me, is pretty clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The casting process, the pilot, I think because shooting the series Supernatural Sometimes you'll be filming an episode on Tuesday that you get the script on the prior Friday. So you have three days to kind of like, okay, I better not forget my lines. Whereas the pilot, it was like shooting a movie where you have, where you're you're living this 48 page script for a month or two months or three, whatever it is, not like for three days. So you don't forget your lines. And so you're trying to figure out who you are. You're trying to establish like, okay, who is this character? What do they want me to do? What am I going to do? I feel like we were... And I I could be wrong, but I'm having a memory of us doing preliminary reads prior to the holidays and then coming back in like January and doing our executive reads and and, and getting the role. Auditioning. So you're auditioning like in front of producers and then you came back in in January and tested in front of the Well, for us, I I think so. Yeah, yeah. I I think you're right. For for us, it wasn't really an audition as much as it was a meeting because Jensen was on Smallville. I was on Gilmore girls. And so we both already had a relationship with Warner Brothers studios. And at the time, Warner Brothers networked. And so like, we know these guys, like they show up on time, they uh, hit their marks, they say their lines, they hang their wardrobe. There are a lot of talented actors and actresses out there, but I think one of the reasons, and I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here and talking about something that we're supposed to talk about later, but one of the reasons that I fully believe that supernatural went so long is because everybody who got involved, with minor exceptions, was just easy, you yeah. know? No. Like, and Ackles and I were just sort of like, we always talked to each other. Like, we just kind of thought of ourselves as soldiers who didn't have to risk their lives. It was like, okay, you tell me where to be, tell me where to go, tell me what I need to do, and I'll do it. Yeah. Not like, well, you know, 4 a.m. is early. Yeah. And I remember, and I'm sure Ackles does as well, like, back in the early days, there was no social media the ways to publicize a show, and we shot in Vancouver. There were no iPhones. There were no iPhones. Yeah, that's Crazy. right. So th- <laughs> we, it, they would they would swap us out and be like, hey, we're doing a radio press tour next Monday. Jensen did the last one, so you're doing this one. Right. And what that meant was that we'd wake up at 2.45 in Vancouver to make sure that we were on a phone call at 3 a.m. to air live at East 6 a.m. on the East Coast. Right. And so we do an hour of, you know, New York, Boston, D.C., Jacksonville or whatever. And then at 4 a.m. Vancouver time, it was now 6 a.m. in Chicago, Dallas, whatever. And so you would do four time zones, so four hours worth of radio interviews. You'd wake up at 2.45, start from 3, go till 6 or 7 or whatever. And then you'd get picked up and go to set and shoot an 18 hour day. Yeah. So it was just a lot of, it was a lot of work. But again, especially in those days when we were both 20 something without wives and kids. We can handle it. We we were like, all right, whatever. We'll be a little tired. I'll, I'll I'll take a sip of coffee at 8 PM to get me through the next six hours. Right. Do you remember when you met each other? I do. Yeah. Was there a chemistry read? Well, the, literally the, the network studio test was, basically our chemistry read. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I can see it as clear as day. Walked into the WB ranch and... Now, was Eric Kripke there in the room and David Nutter, the director? Mm-hmm. They, they were there. 
And um, is that when you first met them as well? No, we had pre-read with them. We had met them. I had a month or two before. I had done a, one of my first ever jobs was an episode of ER that Nutter was Nutter directing, directing, and I was a, a guest star on it. And Jim Belushi was my dad. And so I'd worked with Nutter, and I feel like I had auditioned for something else with him. I can't recall exactly. But then Kripke I'd met just independently. PJ, I think, was there. Nutter, Kripke. All um, producers on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. knew Nutter from Smallville. He directed the pilot of Smallville. Okay. And it came down to me and Welling for Superman. Wow. So I'd run that gamut with Nutter once before. I mean, I read once for them. I didn't even read for Dean. Really? I read for Sam. Sam. Wow. Um, those, were the side, those were the sides. Yeah. They were like, okay, okay we, we have an idea of who Sam is, but, so let's see what you But the you sides were, a, a, it was a scene between Sam and Dean. Did it end up, was it just empty sides? I don't they were recall. only reading was it, it Was it empty sides? Do you recall if it was empty sides or if it was actually a scene from the episode? It was empty Oh, sides. like was it just written? Yeah, it was just, yeah. It, it was just a basic uh, audition kidding. scene. But Dean was still written with, you know, the voice that carried through and, and became the character. And I read for Kripke and David at Wonderland, at McGee's offices on, on Sunset there. Oh, of course. And I sat down, and David said a few nice words because we'd gone through that Smallville thing together. And then I read for Sam, and then at the end, I was like, guys, I really appreciate it, but is there any way I could read the other guy for you? <laughs> <laughs> and they both like looked at each other and laughed, and they were like, you don't have to. Oh, and awesome. then that was it. And then the next time, the first time I ever read Dean was when I walked in, met him at the ranch, I looked at the sign-in sheet. There was no other names. He was the number one name on there. And I signed in right underneath him. And I looked at him, and I was like, where's everybody? Because usually there's yeah, five normal, yeah, other five actors three, right. per you, character. Sure. When you chemistry you're read, you'll read. Exactly. Like, they sw- swap people out. One with six, two with seven. And exactly. nobody seven, right. showed up. And they finally came out and said, Jared Jensen, we're ready to have you back. And so we went back there. We went into the room with all the suits and we read together for the first time oh my God. It was it in a, front it, of everybody in front of 20 and, and that 25, was 30, yeah, it was 30 executives in a big office. Yeah. And I, I read for PJ mm-hmm. Nutter Kripke and McG and I read Sam and I had a holding deal with uh, Warner brothers at the time, which basically meant they were going to put me on something. So it was like, right. Hey, you can't audition for CBS or ABC or NBC or right. Fox or whatever else was on at the time, because we're going to hire you next year on something. We just don't know what, you know, maybe you'll be a guest star on Dawson's Creek, or maybe you'll have your own show sure. or have it, whatever. And I read, and I'm going to sell out our mutual friend, Eric Kripke right now. So after I read, Either that day or the next day, or by the end of the week, my manager and, and producing partner and friend to this day, Dan Spilo, he called and was like, hey, what's the word? Like, how, how is Jared's read? Do you want something else? And, I, and at this point in time, I really wanted this show. And the note from Kripke was, he's great. We love him. But we're looking for, like, a really intelligent Duchovny type. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so That's Dan was hilarious. like, what? And at the time, I was 21 or 22. And Dan had to call and be like, listen – Jared, you know, was magna cum laude. Like, uh, <laughs> like he was going to be an academic. He was going to be pre med at UT with engineering I know he double comes degree. Off as dumb. Yeah, he was national medal <laughs> scholar. Don't let his looks fool you. He, he is He's a, a giant. Smirk. He looks dumb and he b- bumps into stuff. But I promise he can play the Duchovny intelligent part as well. He just farts a lot. He just, yeah, I fart a lot. Um, but he smells and he'll break. Shit. I still, I still but, tease Kripke that he didn't want to hire me initially because he thought I was stupid. Hilarious. Uh, what, what, tur- what turned his opinion around? Like, I paid him a lot of money. Do- I wrote him a check. He still thinks he, that. He, well, back in he the day, still, he just yeah, wanted like, oh, he never changed. Changed. No, he never changed his opinion. Yeah. Just, but, you never go, but you never went back to read again. So it wasn't like he no, gave no. you. I, back in the day, Kripke, he just wanted brown paper bags of black tar heroin. <laughs> right. Um, and and that's a different kind of. <laughs> I just, I just do the boys. He's still going strong, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I wasn't privy to all the conversations, but I think when Spilo called, it's like, listen, this guy was actually an academic in school. Like, you know, like he was national merit, and he was going to do pre med engineering at UT. This and that. They were like, okay, well, let's give him another shot, but have him smart it up a bit or dumb it down a little bit. And so that's when, that's so a week later, whatever it was, that's when Ackles and I met there at the ranch. I see. Yeah. And then when did you realize that you had chemistry, that the two of you, that this was going to work? Because in the pilot, you know, the thing that really makes you go, oh, this is a show I want to keep watching, is the two of you and the chemistry you have. The producers I, right. say, by the way, I that the it, scene on the bridge I, is when they knew. When they I, I, I felt it kind of instantly because, you know, it was just he and me. And so you can, you know, you're in a 10 by 10 waiting room waiting to get someone to walk 
two doors down the hall to the room with the 30 people that will decide right. your future. Right. And so you just kind of shoot the shit a little bit. And he's like, so where are you from? I was like, uh, Texas. He's like, uh, where? Texas. He's like, me too. I was like, cool. And then he softened a little bit. He's like, who's your team? I was like, Cowboys, Longhorns, and Spurs. <laughs> he's like, all right, well, <clears throat> I don't know about Spurs. You know, I'm from Dallas. I like maps, <laughs> but all right. It was like, he softened ever so slightly. Um, bristled a little bit at the Spurs comment. He's like, so uh, you ever listen to country music? I was like, do I ever listen to country music? I'm a, I'm a Texan. He's like, okay. Softened a little bit more slightly. He's like, uh, tell me about your family. I was like, all right. Well, I got an older brother, younger sister. What about you? He's like, I got an older brother, younger sister. He's like, God, it's easier to work for the CIA <laughs> than to <laughs> <the Ackles. laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Never do a chemistry read with Jensen Ackles. Good but Lord. L- long story short, you know, we shot this shit for whatever, 10, 15 minutes. We realized that we both had parents that were still married, living in the house we grew up in. In Texas, we like the same teams. We listen to the same music. We both kind of play guitar and like to be athletic and mm-hmm. fit. And there was and also something, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but back in the day, those audition rooms were really an interesting kind of toxic almost. Uh, they were an interesting window into like human emotion and, and uh, yeah, all of it, yeah, human nature. And I always kind of strived to take the air out of that. Uh, right. You know, the people sitting there really nervous, kind of rocking, reading their lines, standing up, you know, going over their stuff. Yeah. And for me, I almost took a little pleasure in popping that focus for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. With the Band-Aid. I, because I had, I had my lines down. I was, I was good to go. So if somebody was really intensely like – and I don't know if I did it for, for just the overall – feeling of the room or if I was just messing with them a little bit, but I would just start making small talk with them to, to almost knock them off their I, game. I, <laughs> funny. I, I, I you think, think that's what you're yeah. doing to him in that moment? Well, no, because he, we weren't going against no, each other, know, yeah, but I think I was just, each other. I was just used to popping that right. pressure, right. But releasing also, that pressure a bit. Also, and so it was just make some conversation with the guy. And right. even to this day, once you're about to test for studio network, you've signed a six year contract. Right. And so right. if you go into the room next door to the waiting room and they say, cool, we'll take you. That's the next six years of your life. Mm-hmm. And so Ackles, to his credit, was like, have. well, shit, let me ask some hard questions off the bat. I suppose like, how's your day? Right. Good. How's your day? Oh, good as well. I like, might have me, to put up with this guy. Yeah, I might have seasons. to live with this right. guy for the next yeah. five, six right. years if we are so lucky. Yeah, right. And I, I kind of do a similar thing. It's been a while, but if you have 10 minutes before you have to get married to this person or not, mm-hmm. you don't want to ask, like, what's your favorite color? Right. You want to ask, like, all right. Where uh, are you from? Where, like, what, what are your yeah, likes sure. and dislikes? Yeah, what, right. What's your family history? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, hold on. We're coming right back. Hey, this is Richard Spate. You know what? It's 2024. It's a brand new year, and I bet you made some New Year's resolutions, and I bet one of them was to eat healthier. Well, you can get cranking on that resolution right now, my friend, with Factor. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, the prep work, the cooking fatigue. I'm getting tired just talking about it. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you will have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart this resolution off right. Forget frantic lunch prep and rush dinner making. That stinks. Factors two-minute meals, yes, I said two minutes, are your secret weapon in the new year. You get to fuel up fast with restaurant-quality meals all delivered right to your door. It doesn't get any easier than that. And Factor now offers loads of snack options like breakfast, smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep you going no matter what's on the schedule. So I know what you're asking. Rich, how do I tap into this Factor magic? You head to factormeals.com slash SPNTAN50 and use code SPNTAN50 to get 50% off. That's a lot off. That's code SPNTAN50 at factormeals.com slash SPNTAN50 for 50% off. Make that resolution happen now and make it happen at a discount. Fantastic food that's healthy and delicious and delivered right to my door. Now that is how you start the new year off right.
Thanks for listening, everybody. And now back to the episode. But you get along in the reading, and then yeah. obviously leads to you guys both get the gig. And so, like when you when you both know you have the job, how long from I'm hired to now you're making you're on set together? I think it was. I feel like that was quick. It was yeah. It was just a few weeks. Yeah. I remember before I was in Warner Brothers, the big lockup in Burbank. In Burbank, and we're going through like the big wardrobe lockup, and we were kind of picking our outfits with the costume designer, and I felt like that was pretty quick afterwards. And so you got this great cast around you, uh-huh. Adrian, uh, Adrian Pilecki. Linky. Linky, yeah. And uh, Steve Rails back, man. Let's not forget Steve Rails back. Yeah, no shit. Goes up in your yeah. pilot. He's awesome. Like that, dude, drop Sarah Steve, Shahi. Steve yeah. Rails back. Yeah. Played Manson in the uh, Charlie Manson right, story. That's right. And like, he's great. And then, of course, Samantha Smith playing your mom. And we didn't know that she'd be back. Sarah but, Shahi. Yeah. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah. I mean, so great. So when you Alden finish, Ehrenreich when you was finished, in Wendigo. But he, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't forget R.D. Call. Who did he? Who did he, he was oh, the yeah, sheriff. Man. The sheriff. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, these guys are great. You can tell too. Like these are great actors. Um, did you when you finished shooting it? Were you like, I think we've got something here? That's a good question. I mean, I felt like Peter Roth was running Warner Brothers Studios at the time. Uh, he just retired, and he believed in this show and believed in Jensen and me a lot. And I've I've only kind of realized how much he believed in the two of us. After the fact, because at the mm. time you're just like, oh, wow, like they're hiring big names and really talented people. They're spending a ton of money yeah. uh, doing long days. We're having our cinematographer had just won an Oscar for a short film that he had directed oh, and wow. lit. And mm-hmm. yeah. Good and so it was just you would look around and go like, Aaron well, yeah. yeah. And we're, you're like, these people are all great. They surrounded us with people who were more technical because they had worked for years mm-hmm. or just outrageously talented. And so I knew that we had made a great product. Right. But, you know, the vagaries of the industry you are intense. And yeah. so you're like, well, maybe they go like, no, we want to do comedies this right. next year. Sure. And so you don't really know. You know, like, I realize that I have a job when I get a check in the mail. Mm-hmm. Not, you know, after having filmed it. Not mm-hmm. like, oh, well, that was really good. Mm-hmm. And so I think we looked at each other. And, you know, I had done a few pilots mm-hmm. prior to Supernatural Jensen as well. You know, Jensen even did a show that shot several episodes and didn't get it. So you're never, you never, really, no, yeah, you're like, no. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not right. gonna cash this check sure. yet. Like, I'm proud of the work yeah, I, I did. We shot seven episodes of that show and, and Fox just shelved it and never saw the last. Yeah, day. yeah. And it so it was like sort of, fifteen million dollars they pumped into this thing and it's just collecting dust somewhere. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Um, I remember that year, two thousand five. There, every network seemed to have some kind of. Uh, supernatural kind of show or alien show or something that it's right after lost lost was on the year before the year before yeah. and, and so this year there's a lot of it like heroes heroes, heroes was, invi- at, was that the same year it was the year the year after i thought year before really i think it was the year- 2005 was invasion that's on right. like abc surface on nbc yeah, and right. a show that i was on called threshold on cbs never heard of it and thank you. And um, <laughs> not a fan. 13, 13 episodes. That's a weird name. But anyway, the point is. Um, That's funny because Firefly did 13 episodes. They made a whole movie about it. There's yeah, still yeah. conventions. But uh, yeah. Threshold, I don't, I'm a fan. I don't know that that really did anything. Yeah. It didn't. It, it did, I mean, it didn't. It, but, but, you know, it was Carlo Gugino and Peter Dinklage and myself. But the point is, this isn't about me, guys. This is your podcast. But. Um, the point is that every network had a show. The only one that made it, only one that made it past, was it was your show. We definitely outlasted. Yeah. Uh, I think the only show that was of that year of that class uh, was Grey's Anatomy that, that is still on that outlasted us. They didn't keep the same cast though. I mean, like, they, they the didn't keep factors. the same cast, but also, yeah, Gr- for- Grey's made the choice to go on Odd Infinitum, whereas. Ackles and I and the gang that put the show together, the rest of us, um, decided, decided like, hey, yeah. we should probably meet our wives and kids yeah, someday yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and live in our country of right. residence. We should, yeah. we should come up for um, air at some point. Yeah, we should take a breath. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Tell us more about Threshold. No, no, no. <laughs> um, wait. no I have, two, I, I have, two, I have two, two thoughts about the pilot. So you talk about the DP. I noticed visually it's much darker than the rest of the show. Visually, mm. it's a darker tone and more contrasty lighting it's really it, like it's more lit like a horror movie i think than the show ended up being well that was later. kind of the initial that was the initial idea it's almost like a horror movie per week but right long story short that's unsustainable that you know we would have three hour lighting setup sometimes mm-hmm. we had over three weeks to shoot the pilot yeah. we shot a 42 minute pilot you know with 18 minutes commercials um in the time that it took, time it took to, to shoot two two two, two episodes. yeah two and change wow. episodes and so we went from Aaron Schneider to Sarah's La Doucière, and 
when you go to episodic television and they say for an actor and I imagine for a crew as well, that one hour episodic television is the most difficult job. You know, like we mentioned earlier, if you do a movie, even if it takes as long as a season of television, you have that movie script six months in advance, three months in advance, at the minimum a month in advance. And you know what to expect. You know that if you're riding a horse in the movie, you better start taking a horseback riding lessons. You know, if you're doing Kung Fu, you better start going to learn jujitsu and Kung Fu and whatever, you know, that like, Oh, I have a sex scene. I better start eating less candy or, Oh, I have to, make some jokes in the midpoint of the script, I better try and work on my comedic timing. Whereas with the one hour episodic drama, there are 20 times as much as 23 for us where you get a a script, you know, nothing of that you're going to be filming in three days. So it's like, Hey, here's an episode where you speak Spanish. You're like, I don't know Spanish or you speak sign language. You're like, I don't, or you're doing a handstand for three scenes. You're like, I've never done a handstand in my life. And so you don't have any time to prepare And so every moment you're not filming the current episode, you're scrambling, trying to figure out how to get prepped for the next episode that you just read. Combing the Vancouver casting offices for a handstand guy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, With long hair and a big forehead. Piggybacking piggyback on that. How much when you shot the pilot, did you think about what your character's situation was in terms like there's a great scene between the two of you where you're like dad's on a hunting trip. Dad's on a hunting trip. And he hasn't been home in a few days. And you're like, oh, sh**, yeah. you know, it's time to, you know. And then and did you think about what your life was? Because you, your character, Dean, didn't have a home. Essentially, Essentially. yeah. It, well, and tying that into kind of what we were talking about prior to this, like when did we know that we had something yeah. that we thought was could be a success? Right. I've just been thinking about that. And I think it was the day that we shot that particular scene. It was the house. It was Michelle. Sam's yeah. house, which I believe was down by U- USC. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was in USC. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was a USC house. And that was the day that we shot the fight, the fight scene, which he and I were very comfortable with doing. And I was like, oh, good, because there's going to be a lot of, be one of, be a lot of action. Yeah. And he and I are both athletic enough to handle this stuff, yeah. so that's great. And then that scene, the, mm-hmm. you know, dad's on a hunting trip, hadn't been home in a few days. And then I think there was also matching that with I saw the playback of me kicking the door in after Jess lights on on fire and it cuts to me coming back for him and kicking the door in. Yeah. And I remember I saw that shot and I was like, oh, that's some heroic shit right there. That's That's awesome. And I was like, we might get three seasons out of this. Uh, (laughs) This is this is gonna be a home run. Yeah. We we might get three, we might even get four seasons (laughs) out of this show. I remember that day, and it was a, it was also the same day that we went outside when the sun went down. We went outside and we shot the very last shot of the pilot. We got work to do. Yeah, it was that same that that so day. Was that, at, was that at Satakoy? Was that at Satakoy Studios? Was that the day that we we lit the roof on fire? Literally? No, I mean that that uh-huh. wasn't that day. This was literally on location at USC, filming at that house. Wow! And we shot that okay. street. All right. And with the, yeah. the back of the Impala that do. night yeah. after we shot the fight scene that yeah. afternoon. That's so cool. Do you know that that scene, the, the, end, the end sequence of the pilot, and the I don't fire. think I've ever talked about this just because I've never thought about it, but it was multi-part. We shot you know, him kicking in at the door at USC, me getting the cookies and the note, laying down on the bed and seeing her body Jess, just yeah. like right. Jeff saw Sam's body on right. the roof. And then we shot a scene at Satakoy Studios where it was, it was as if you took a four walled with a floor and a roof bedroom and took one wall off. And so when you looked at the set, it would be the bed on the right. It's like a sitcom um, set. The door on the left. <laughs> yeah, sitcom set. And they don't do this these days, I don't believe. No. But we actually shot the wide angle that Nutter wanted of Sam with laying down on the fire. bed. With live fire inside, inside, inside the, the soundstage, inside the soundstage, with Holy Jared cow. in the bed and me running in and grabbing and safety him people yeah. with live fire. And oh then they God. were like, "As soon as you get warm, run!" Right. And so if you, start it was just, feeling, if yeah. you feel too hot, get yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> like give us what wow. you can. But as soon as you feel unsafe or hot, get out of the fire. And then like fire trucks there, like oh full on fire God. department there. Um, I remember there been, was one take, and you were really, you were really emotional it, yeah. in, in, in that particular scene. And I, I'm supposed to pull you back, and you were fighting so hard against me, and I was starting to get hot. And instead of 
instead of me going like, you know, we got to go, we got to go. I was like, I'm getting hot. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when he went from like, that wasn't too heroic. Maybe two, maybe two seasons. Yeah. Maybe, not maybe, maybe two seasons. <laughs> maybe two seasons or at least until my eyebrows grow back. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it burns. It burns. It burns. It burns. Hot, burns. Hot, 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 hot. Uh, the uh, effects in the first episode, too, I thought I was impressed with. Because right. sometimes you see something yeah. made 15 years ago, and you're like, eh, that could have been better. But, like, the, the ghost... That must have like, been Threshold. I should, I should have <laughs> never I should never have brought that up. I thought oh, this will be a funny tidbit. No, that's got legs. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, I thought the effects were pretty good. The ghost sort of but, yeah. like, going in and out, I thought was a cool... Like, it, it holds up remarkably well. I mean, and even... Well, now that I know it's real fire, but, like... So, let me ask you this. The, the ceiling gag... Yeah. For Jess and for uh, Mary. Yeah. Were you guys around when they shot that? No. Uh, I was not. No. I don't know how they did that. Because that's intense looking, too. And yeah. that also leads me to ask, because you you did a pilot with the lady, but you didn't have any scenes with her, did you ever meet Sam Smith? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. We met her the day they shot the Get the Boys Out of the House. We met her. I remember meeting Jeffrey Dean Morgan as well that day. We met him. He was really excited. He was like, that hey, was, man. Yeah, this that was great. when they when he yeah. runs with young Sam yeah. uh and, and, to get out of the house, and, and yeah, and hands Runs him off to Dean, hands him off to yeah. Dean. Says Dean, turn around and run as fast as you can. Yeah. yeah. So that did, was the same day. I mean, it, it was a big a day. It was a lot of big, epics. Yeah. Every day was a big day. Like these were long oh, yeah. days, and yeah. there were a lot of them. And the set where we shot the scene driving up to the house, it was a practical house, and I feel like that mm-hmm. was also. And I remember mm-hmm. Jensen had he was he's still obviously he's a musician and he's really into music but he had just told me about Ray LaMontagne who had just had yeah. his first album come out wow. and so I bought the CD drove <laughs> in my SUV and I think I made it through the entire Ray LaMontagne trouble album wow. between the time I left my house in uh in North Hollywood and got to set wherever it was wow. and there was one day where I don't think we shot anything after lunch and that was a scene where Sam pulls up and then Sarah Shahi's character, the woman in white, she appears and it's also the exterior of the house that we end up going inside a shoot where the, the dresser is smashed against the wall. But I think like after lunch, they started setting something up and six hours after lunch, it wasn't lit yet. And they were like, you, uh, we're going to go ahead and send you home and we're going to do this tomorrow. And you're like, what? Like, why don't you rent me six hours ago? And they just didn't realize yet. So the, the days were long. Long, yeah. big, long uh, epic. Days. It was big. Well, you know, there's so many iconic scenes in this episode, in this episode, especially now, of course, looking back in retrospect and going, wow, that sets up so much right. stuff. Did Krippy, Kripke ever tell you, like, hey, by the way, you're going to find your dad in episode whatever? No. no, you didn't know anything. No, we were along for the ride just yeah. as much as the audience yeah, right. was. I mean, we would get a script and be like, whoa, what's going to happen? Yeah, gonna yeah. Happen? yeah. So there, there was very little kind of discussion and that model really never changed over the 15 mm. years i mean the, the maybe other... the last couple of seasons yeah there were a few episodes like the french mistake they called us sure. ahead of time to say like hey how we, do you guys feel about we're thinking about something this? how do y'all feel about playing jared padalecki and jensen ackles right right and we talked about it with each other and thought like how do we feel about it like right. okay as long as we're sam and dean winchester then you can call us whatever you want to call us. But yeah, yeah for the but, most part, Krippy didn't didn't uh, yeah. he didn't give us. He any never kind of, did. It, no. I, it always and he, felt like that. For and me he too. didn't give anybody. But he had yeah. this like Bible in his head. Yes. Of where he was going, what was going to happen, the character arcs and stuff. But he didn't share it to anybody. And I I would imagine that's just probably self preservation. So he doesn't lock himself into sure. anything. Yeah. If he sure. needs to pivot or he needs to adjust, he's able. He's and he had written the that. initial conception of what became Supernatural when he was at USC writing school. It was something that he'd been trying to sell for years, and they were like. Uh, that ain't got legs. We'd rather was, pick up threshold. I, I think it was. A, <laughs> I, I think it was originally. Uh, it was originally like cops. Um, what was it, cops? Six, meets Route sixty six. Yeah. No, 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 no. Sam and Dean were two. Were like. Oh, uh, we're, we're, were actually were cops. Oh, no kidding. Police officers. Yeah. Yeah. I know it was if like I on the road it was, a little it bit. Was, it changed. It changed a bit. Interesting. Um, but uh, but eventually that landed. Worked. Eventually landed no. on brothers. Oh. Last question. Then we're gonna uh, have. To Why wouldn't that have worked? You don't like cop shows. I, what are you I, trying to say? Uh, what, well, I was. You it, know what I'm doing for a living right now? Did, did you ever see Threshold? Because that explains a lot. I did love. Okay, never. I, I forgot what I was saying. Did I mention Peter Dinklage was in it? Um, so also, um, I only no, watched his scenes. So you also, we also get to meet. We also get to meet uh, Baby the Impala, uh, which is another iconic character yeah. in the show. Yeah. Do you remember seeing that and seeing the Impala and going, "Wow, this is a cool car. This is gonna be." Neat, do you remember that moment? Yeah. Well, I remember reading it in the script because I was thinking, oh, it's going to be talking about a classic car. It's yeah. going to be probably a Mustang or it's going to be a Challenger or it's going to be something in that. But the Impala was kind of a kind of a little bit of a left field choice 
in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. So I've always been a big fan of that. You know, Krippy could have gone with the obvious choice, and instead he went he went a little left Bold field. Old gangster, yeah, yeah. Bold which, gangster I, which I, I love it. I yeah, love that. well, My, and it, it's a, there's this element a little bit of almost like a superhero. You know what I mean? That's your Batmobile. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, very much Tru so. Trusty old. It's absolutely an archetype. You yeah. know, I mean, uh, Luke Skywalker has his lightsaber, you know, and the natural, it was the baseball. Exactly. You know, like there, there's that. Yeah. Like Harry Potter has his wand. Threshold is Dinklage. No, you know, you don't get to Dinklage. joke about this. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in this. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, threshold has threshold. its Dinklage. Oh, it. has its Dinklage. Uh, yeah. Uh, th there was so much. And Kripke, I think one of the first conversations he and I had had said, like, hey, have you read Joseph Campbell? And I was like, yeah, I did. You know, my, my mother oh, cool. taught Heroes, Myths, and Legends in high school, and she's, you oh, know, cool. she's English major, and we were big readers in our family. And so I was familiar with the archetypes and those classic storytelling tropes. And randomly, I always, I always was a 60s Chevy or just classic car fan. My first ever car was 69 Camaro, which is almost done. It's been being restored for about the last 10 years just because I've been waiting for like OEM parts and doesn't that. Anyways, and I'd also had like a 65 Mustang that I bought and restored a little bit and sold. Um, and I had always been into late 60s muscle cars and late 60s watches. That's right? cool, man. So seeing it was like, yeah, I don't think I'd ever seen in my life a 67 Impala, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I knew of them and I knew yeah. the engine blocks and whatnot because, yeah. you know, I was kind of a, Nerd. Yeah. He asked me, he, he very similar conversation. He said, uh, you know, are you familiar with Joseph Campbell and that whole character archetype? And I said, are you kidding me? I love Evil Dead. I, Ash is like <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite characters. And, and he just, he kind of paused and then he looked at me and he was like, I chose wisely. <laughs> yeah. He's like, put me, put me behind a steering wheel and I'll face it. Do what He's I like, do. that's that's the Dean I wanted yeah. right there. That's <laughs> there, it. There he is. There he is. Perfect. Um, all right. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks. Appreciate you talking about the pilot episode. It's epic. It's epic having you guys here. And, uh, Have and we, you too, uh, Rich. we come to that threshold where we're going to change. Oh God. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> On that note, thanks for joining us. <laughs> hey there. This is Richard Spate Jr. And I hope you're enjoying the episode. But we need to pull over for a few seconds for some messages. Thanks for listening. Now, back to the episode. I gotta say, yeah, what a rare treat, not only to be able to talk to those guys, but to get them both to actually sit down in a room That's right. at one time. Yeah, no. it's, it's like catching a Sasquatch and a abominable snowman yes. and roping them together. Or herding two very large cats. Very large, sexy cats. <laughs> so fun, though. So fun to talk to the guys. And, oh, so great. And to get the original story of how they met and how they bonded with each other. And, and Jensen saying, uh, you know, so what's going on? Where are you from? What team do you root for? <laughs> Truly. Sounds like a classic Ackles interview. Yeah. So we're talking about the pilot and um, a couple things we need to track as we go for people keeping score. Yeah. So this is our first installment of The Bitch Count. Right. We'll be tracking all the bitches and sons of bitches across the entire series, because why not? I think we mean as they are spoken, not the actual person who might be a bitch i mean nobody like, thought that i'm just saying i'm just saying the word bitch you know what i'm saying Robbie? <laughs> we'll just take the check thank you um okay so uh we've got two bitches in this episode rob and rich <laughs> that's right but in the episode but in the episode the actual episode we've got two bitches both from dean we'd like to point out the first use of the iconic jerk bitch exchange here, right yeah that's uh, excellent right that was and right there it's uh, an immortal you know, exactly. moment between the boys right yeah, there in the pilot. Yeah, especially in these first couple episodes, you get some immortal lines said. We're I like, know. oh, that's where that came it from. Catches me off guard a lot. We're also going to uh, start to count, we're calling it the Antiques Road Trip. And we're counting uh, things that make this show a little bit dated. A little dated. Right. So for this one, do you remember when computer monitors were the size of microwaves? I mean, the computer right. they do the research on when they go into the, the, the library. Yeah. That one? <laughs> I know. And it's like a dot matrix printer. Yeah, exactly. I, I got one for you. Yeah. In the scene, the opening scene with Sam in the bar, the guests are talk, talking about, you know, I don't have the, the perfect family. And the guy goes, yeah, well, we're not exactly the Huxtables. He makes a uh, right. Cosby, fan, right. Cosby show joke. That's right, yeah. which you can't really make anymore. Nope, I can't even say it here in the podcast. No, we might be cutting that out. And then the other thing we're going to walk you through is creepy kid watch. Oh, there yeah. There are a lot of creepy kids on this show. Other uh, some trivia points worth bringing up is... Um, the note from Jessica on Sam's cookies were written by Holly Aulis, 
who was our longtime publicist from the WB. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. One of the only two episodes shot in the United States. The other one was The Bloodlines Backdoor Pilot in Season 9. Interestingly, I didn't know on TV at that time you could show Sam's cookies. (laughs) Holly did. So there was a mistake in the end and other early scripts where Dean refers to not talking to Sam for two years rather than four, because Sam was initially supposed to be 20, not 22. Wow, there you go. And did you know that Eric Kripke's son was born on Sam's birthday, May 2nd? Wow, I did not know that. Two years after the pilot was shot, meaning it's not something that Eric set up. It just happened. Mind blown. Yeah, and Dean shares a birthday with Kripke's wife. That's kind of weird. Kind of on the nose. (laughs) So let's get into the lore of this, uh, this show. The Woman in White is a real folktale with many forms. The key inspiration for this version is La Llorona from Mexico, a figure who possibly has origins in pre-colonial indigenous culture. Originally, the woman who was the subject of the hit song from the 80s, My Sharona. That's right. But the Mexican version was La La Llorona. Right. Um, In the most common version of the story, La Llorona, the weeping woman who lost her husband, sometimes to death and other times to infidelity, as in Supernatural's version, in her grief, she kills her children. Oof. She immediately regrets this because it, it, it was a bad idea. Yes, bad she choice. should have done that. And then she drowns herself, which is it's hard to do. But because of her crimes and suicide, she cannot enter heaven, and so she wanders the night weeping. In other versions, her children are illegitimate, and she kills them. Because their father will never accept them. Oh, it's, but it's nice. She obviously has her <laughs> crap together. <laughs> Stories of mother killing their children go back a long ways in many cultures to figures like Medea in Greece. As Sam notes, there are other women in white all over the world. It just seems to be a popular choice color for ghosts. Interestingly, the woman in white is not allowed to appear after Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, This episode also combines the woman in white with another popular story, the hitchhiking ghost. Interestingly, there are stories in Hawaii of an old woman in white asking for rides on the big island. (laughs) She gets in the car and then disappears, and it is believed she is the volcano goddess Pele, which was popularized in the cartoon that the rock was in. Moana. There you go, Moana. And one of Brazil's greatest soccer players. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is correct. Pele was also a soccer player. This pilot episode starts Jared Padalecki as Sam Winchester. Chenson Ackles as Dean Winchester. Jeffrey Dean Morgan as John Winchester. Samantha Smith as Mary Winchester. Adrian Palicki as Jessica Moore. And Sarah Shahi as Constance Welch. The episode also features R.D. Call, Steve Railsback, Derek Webster. Camille Walker-Smith, Elizabeth Bond, Miriam Korn, and Robert Peters. The episode was written by Eric Kripke, directed by David Nutter, edited by Paul Karasik. With music by Christopher Lennertz and featured songs by Ginger, Classic, Eagles of Death Metal, The Almond Brothers Band, ACDC, and Keith Rozier. Or if you're watching on Netflix, you'll hear music by Rabbit Junk. Revenge Freak Child, The Loveless, and The Bad Touch. It was executive produced by Eric Kripke and Robert Singer. And it first aired on September 13th, 2005. Well, Rich, this is going to be fun. It already was fun. That's right. We're already mid-fun. I know. But it always it usually takes me an episode to realize, oh, you know what? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't hate this. This was a good idea. Yeah, this is great. This is super fun. We're already, I mean, the fact that we already launched this bad boy with Jared and Jensen, I mean. I know. It's great. I run. can't wait for episode two. Me neither. In the meantime, let me tell you about this podcast. The episode of Supernatural Then and Now was hosted and executive produced by me, Richard Spade Jr., and that guy, Rob Benedict. It was produced by Stephen Hine, written by Jessica Mason, author of The Binge Watcher's Guide to Supernatural, an unofficial companion. And edited and associate produced by Trey Booty. Music provided by Tim Wynn. The episode was recorded with the help of Sonic Fuel Studios. This podcast is a production from Story Mill Media. For the latest... On this and other podcasts, follow Story Mill Media on Instagram and Twitter. I used to get mistaken for uh, uh, Barry Watson. Barry Watson. Uh, um, and I feel like I've signed a photo as or a piece of paper as Barry Watson. And he was my in Kripke's first movie. That's right. That's yes. right. Yeah, that's right.
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when my oh, when my girlfriend at the time in season one or two of Supernatural was flying from LA to Vancouver, she sat next to some guy and they're they're chatting. He's like, "What are you What are you doing up there?" She's like, oh, "I'm film, I'm visiting my boyfriend." And he's like, "Oh, cool. What, 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 is he Canadian?" She's like, "No, no, he's filming a TV show." And he's like, "Oh, what TV show?" She goes, "Oh, it's it's new. It's called Supernatural." He goes, "No way." Is he the short one or the one from Seventh Heaven? Like, <laughs> and she's like, "Well, he's not. Jensen's not short. Like, Jensen's like six Neither. foot something." But I mean, he's, 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 she's, she's like the Hilarious. one from Seventh Heaven. I was like, I've never been on Seventh Heaven. Oh, All the Gilmore Girls or whatever. Funny. It's 2005, and two brothers set off on a road trip that would save the world and change television. Simon and Garfunkel? Not brothers. <laughs> I think you should say that. No. Well, someone the other day came up and told me they really loved a movie that Rich was in, as if I was in it. They're, <laughs> they're like, they're like, are you recording, Rich? I am. Okay. They're, they're like, we really loved you in Driven, and I was like, it was a great movie. And I go, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> you should have signed something. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, hey, love Driven. <laughs> Story Mill Media. The biggest winner in the big game could be you, thanks to BetMGM. The king of sportsbooks is offering new customers a chance to score $158 in bonus bets instantly. That's right, instantly. Just download the BetMGM app and sign up using bonus code VEGAS58. Then place a $5 money line wager on the big game. You'll receive $158 in bonus bets instantly, regardless of your wager's outcome. Don't miss your opportunity to cross the goal line on the money line as pro football's top teams clash for the championship. Can't be in Vegas for the big game? Then bring the big game excitement to you with the king of sportsbooks. BetMGM and GameSense reminds you to play responsibly. See BetMGM.com for terms. 21 plus only. Iowa only. New customer offer. Subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. That's 1-800-BETS-OFF. 